welcome to another episode of Classroom. If there's anything that has put equity markets to shame by way of its pullback, it's the crude market. From triple digits, that market completely collapsed and, what, and went into what looked like an intense bear phase. And then there was the revival. So as we speak, it's back to 70. It seems to be looking like that market is stabilizing again. But what makes it tick and what decides the price for the crude oil space, something we all track very carefully. I've got two special guests to talk about that for an industry perspective, Are Sharma of ONGC and Jonathan Barrett of Commodity Broking, who understands the commodity itself very carefully. So let me start off first with the industry perspective with Mr. Are Sharma. How would you define, Mr. Sharma, what crude oil is? See, crude oil, you, first of all, you know, all the economic activity across the world is driven by energy. And uh, we look at uh, the energy basket, about 45% of the, the global energy basket is contributed by oil and gas. Uh, no, sorry, 45% in India, in if, we, if we take uh, the, the global, it is about 60%. So what is we find and uh, the other, uh, the major uh, contribution for the energy comes from coal. Because of the environmental concerns, there are more and more the focus priority coming for uh, this hydrocarbon that is oil and gas and we find uh, because of uh, the energy demand constantly increasing supply sources for uh, this oil and gas across the world comparatively drying up so difference between demand and supply narrowing, uh, narrowing down puts a lot of pressure on the pricing and as we know crude oil is the most traded commodity in the world. Let's talk about a couple of other factors that determine pricing for crude oil. Mr. Sharma, the first one is extraction. Uh, in that, is there any yes. determinant to what happens with pricing in how difficult or how easy it is to extract oil? Of course, you see this uh, in a, uh, the basic fundamentals of the demand and supply. Under that, it comes that when the, uh, the supply sources are limited, then in that case, what are the marginal the production coming? And what is the cost of producing that marginal oil? That determines basically the price. And we know now this, uh, especially the North Sea, this uh, Gulf of Mexico, all that entire OECD countries, they are alarmingly seeing their production declines happening. And uh, if the production increase is either coming from these OPEC countries or this FSU, more and more uh, this production is coming from the frontier areas, deep waters where the cost of production is high. And if you look at now this, uh, this oil sands, they are coming in a big way to contribute for uh, this oil production in times to come. We find the cost of production from these marginal areas is quite high. Even this IOR, EOR that is increased production from the existing fields the cost of technology, the cost of oil field services. So we feel that uh, now this uh, the cost itself does not make it viable to produce at a price level less than 60 to 70 dollars. So we feel one thing is obvious that in times to come, the, uh, the easy oil prices or what we had seen until uh, the 90s, uh, those price levels are a thing of the past. And we find after uh, this 2002 onwards, prices have been constantly going up. I feel this, what are the current prices are there, we don't hope to see the prices levels going down less than these levels. You've uh, let the cat out of the bag, Mr. Sharma. You've already told me what range you see crude at between 50 to 60. But I just wanted to take a step back because there are various types of crude that we talk about. So for a layman, when we talk about crude oil prices, which is the one one should look at? Should one look at Brent crude? Should one look at crude WTI? What is the, the key crude oil market to track when we do indeed watch it? Well, these are the, if we the Brent and the WTI, these are the NYMEX in the US market and the Brent in the, the UK. These are the major markets where the, uh, the trades take place. And uh, not only the trades, now this hedging products, the, the derivatives, there uh, the lot of activities happening. And uh, the traders not only going beyond the normal uh, the hedging, now, this derivative market going into the speculative uh, the trades, speculative trades are much larger than the actual uh, the hedging trades or the actual sale purchase in the futures happening. And uh, we find in these kind of the speculative market, these sentiments 
drive the demand and supply the sentiment set the pricing see last year when these price levels went up to 147 dollars a barrel nowhere there was any concern about the demand not being met there were no disruptions when again the prices collapsed again there was a no over supply happening anywhere so that is a basis that only the fundamentals of for the sentiments i would say not the fundamentals they rule the prices okay let's take a break on that note when we come back more on the prickly issue of pricing of crude uh, oil and where it should actually settle at